coordinator for IEW. I work mostly from home, which is actually where we're at right now at my house. And I'm here with actually my dad. Um, and we are going to do a uh, Q&A here. We have some questions that we've taken from some followers, as well as some taken from a cons conference, and we will be answering those today. So, are you ready to get started? I am ready. I don't normally hug and kiss employees, but, <laughs> but I'm, I'm happy, daughter, to, so. happy to be here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so the very first question that we have is from at Beth Adams 5417, and she asked, I have two boys that I want to start with IEW writing and grammar resources, but I do not know which levels to start with. They are ages 11 and 14. Well, um, we, we really need to have a more involved conversation of because course. there's so many details. Our customer service team at IEW.com Amazing. Amazing. Most wonderful people in the um, world. But it is possible to teach boy, you know, kids that age range together, mm -hmm. and then it's usually better to err on the side of it being a little bit simpler. So with our materials, older kids, they do fine when things are a little bit simpler. It gets a little tricky if you err up, and then the younger one is feeling overwhelmed or stressed. Right. So, uh, but you know, especially in terms of the grammar. Um, you know, I think uh, have a conversation with our excellent team They're and they amazing. will point you in the right direction. And then if you end up with the wrong thing, it's, it, you can swap it out too because of our unconditional no time limit <laughs> satisfaction guarantee. You're right. And I tell people all the time, we we know that there's sometimes a connotation with customer service teams as not being the most amazing place to deal with a talk to conversation, but everybody that works in our customer service team is loving and kind and would be more than happy to have as long of a conversation as you need to make sure that you feel comfortable with your purchase. And then again, if you don't enjoy your purchase afterward, return policy is wonderful. Yeah. So, all right, moving on, we have at Jenna JG asked, um, I have a ninth grader new to IW, struggling writer. Would you start with level B or jump right into level C? Yeah, I, again, you know, talking through a little more would help, but in general, um, erring on the side of starting a little bit softer, mm -hmm. especially if, you know, as she said, struggling, so writing is not a strong point. Um, and there's no rush. One thing that's interesting is we kind of teach the same thing to everybody, mm -hmm. whether they're in third grade or graduate school. Right. What varies is the reading level, the source text, and the speed of introducing the new stylistic techniques and moving through the units. Oh. Mm -hmm. You don't lose anything by starting at level B. Uh, it's just going to be a little more gradual, and you've still got several years uh, you know, ahead of you. Ninth grade is still on the younger end of teenagerness. Right, yes, mm -hmm. you can always move faster, right? If you want to. If you, if you mm -hmm. want to do more assignments each week, you can do that as well. So. Yeah. All right, next question is from at, and I'm not sure how to pronounce this, so I apologize if I get it wrong, but it looks like Skook UMK asked, how do the assignments change as you level up? Yeah, so we, we use source texts. So uh, students are getting stories, articles, information, things to research. And so really the most important thing is the reading level. Mm -hmm. So when people say, oh, I have, you know, uh, what should I use? I will generally not say how old is your child or what's what grade. I will say what's the reading level, mm, right. because you could have a younger student who reads very very well and might be fine. You'd also have an older student with some hangover dyslexia or whatever, and still you know you don't want it to be overwhelming. So mm -hmm. generally, you know, err on the side of a little simpler, and then if it's too easy, that's great because mm -hmm. then the student has this sense of success oh, this isn't hard, I can do this, let's move on. So uh, that's mostly what changes, is just the source texts, and then uh, the speed of introducing the new techniques that add to the checklist. But even within that, uh, teachers and parents have total control over the speed of the introduction. So if the course, or if the book, or the video course, or whatever is going too fast, just cross something off and hang out there for a while. We have a, a motto around our business and curriculum, which is, easy plus one. Love it. So we only want to give the students what is going to be easy plus one new thing. So that's what we do. And nobody wants to feel like they're extremely challenged and they're not good at something. So we just want to make sure people feel like they can do this, they got this, and then we can slowly add it. Yeah, and it's, it's a system. So everybody starts at unit one and two regardless of age. 
Yeah. Like I said, even if you were in graduate school and you wanted to learn how to write with our system or teach our system, everyone starts yeah. unit one or two. <laughs> All right, great. Mm -hmm. We hope that answered the question. All right, the next question is from at the gold pine cone, which is an awesome username, mm -hmm. asked, how much help should I give my children when writing? I don't want to end up writing their papers or have them rely on me to come up with all the ideas. I do try to let them sit and get a little uncomfortable before I lend a hand. They are ages 8 and 10, both working on SSS year 1 level A, and the 10-year-old asks for less help than the 8-year-old. Yeah, well, 8 years old is quite young, mm -hmm. you know, and it, boys tend to be even younger at that age, not always, but um, I would say don't worry about helping too much. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, I have a talk called The Four Deadly Errors of Great Teaching talk. and Writing. We can post a link to yes, that or I something. Will put a link. Um, but one of the deadly errors is withholding help. Mm -hmm. So if a child feels overwhelmed, frustrated, I don't know what to do, I can't think of anything, mm -hmm. you don't want to get there. It's better to go ahead and just do it together. Yeah. Um, and here's the good news, and this is what I say in that talk. You can't actually help a child too much mm -hmm. because they always tell you when they don't need help. Yeah. <laughs> They're wired for that. Yeah. So, you know, at some point they'll say, okay, mom, I got it, leave me alone. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you don't have to worry really about just doing things together and you're not really writing it for them. You're just doing it together. And that's how we learn everything, right? I mean, we, we teach our children everything. We cook together, we clean together. I'll do this, hey, you can do that. So you, you think about writing a little more organically and not worrying, kind of like schools do, like if anybody helps you somehow that's cheating. There's no cheating. There's yeah. no cheating. Everybody can just help as much as they need. Yeah. That's the great thing. All right, this is a bit of a different question on a different topic. Okay. Kara asked, what books about diet and health are you reading? <laughs> well, um, I, I have been on kind of a, a development of and I'll diet tell you, and the, nec the next question right after that is from Therese, and she asked how did you lose so much weight? So those go a little bit hand in hand. Yeah, so I did lose 60 pounds. Amazing, amazing. Um, which is surprising to me because I wouldn't have thought myself that heavy, but it just shows that little by little over time you can... You yeah, can the difference is in pictures if you see old yeah. pictures versus new. But uh, the first book that I read was called Eat to Beat Disease mm -hmm. by um, Dr. William Lee, L.I. Okay. And I didn't read this book because I had a disease and I wanted to beat a particular mm -hmm. disease. I kind of read the book thinking, I don't want to get any diseases. Right, preventative. And uh, one of the great... There we go. One of the great themes in that book was let food be your medicine and let your medicine be your food. And I have, you know, unpacked that and as I came to understand a lot more about the different benefits of different foods, mm -hmm. as well as the reasons why some foods are just, have no benefit whatsoever, right. I gradually shifted to a point where I really don't eat anything unless I know that there is a tangible benefit. Mm -hmm. um, a, a donut from Krispy Kreme would not mm -hmm. qualify in my book as having any value whatsoever. And what's interesting is you get into that mindset and it's almost like now I wouldn't want to eat anything, even if it theoretically tasted good, because my mind is telling me what I really want is what's good for me. Right, you're tuned into that part of your brain that's asking you for the nutrients. Yeah, so that was uh, the first book that I read. I also read this book, Why We Sleep, Mm -hmm. by Matthew Walker, it had a that. huge impact on me because I was, you know, a typical business owner, busy dad, husband, run, burning mm -hmm. the candle at both ends, trying to do everything. And I, I had shorted myself on sleep for a long time. Yeah. And that contributes to all sorts of, you know, problems, especially when you hit your 60s, you're thinking, mm -hmm. all right, what do I not want to experience mm -hmm. in the next couple decades, right. assuming I live that long? And then um, recently, um, I picked up um, a pretty radical book, a big, thick, huge textbook size thing called Boundless by Ben Greenfield. Mm -hmm. And of course, he's a, he's a biohacker guy, and I can't say that I would want to try everything he has tried mm -hmm. on himself, um, but that kind of brings in the whole picture of 
sleep and, and exercise and nutrition and lifestyle and attitude and spirituality <clears throat> in a way that you know I found really interesting uh, so uh, but that's a that's a huge massive undertaking to, to do that book I think it's like the, I bought the audio first so I think it's 40 <laughs> hours 40 some hours wow. and then I actually bought the the hard copy so that you because I because I couldn't remember <laughs> yeah. stuff and, uh, so those would be, I'd say, the top three books. Um, but I'm mostly listening to a lot of, you know, podcasts um, yeah, on health and fitness and nutrition and well-being. What's your favorite um, podcast? Um, I like Ben Greenfield's ben podcast Green, quite a called? bit. Um, it's called the Ben Greenfield oh, okay. podcast. <laughs> what's really funny is that I didn't know this um, until I realized it, but that is the same Ben Greenfield that I knew when he was a little kid. Wow. We were living crazy. in Moscow, Idaho, and his family was homeschooling. He's a homeschool graduate. Wow. And so, actually, your, your sister, Muriel, used to play with his sister. Wow. And so, it was this relationship, and then he contacted me, I don't know, a couple of years ago, said, oh, I have these twin boys, and I heard about your writing stuff, wow. so I sent him some stuff. It's a small world. It is a small <laughs> world, but uh, he's he's pretty much on the, he'll try anything on himself, and then report on well, how that worked. That's know? great when people like that write books, because you can get all the knowledge without having to sort of experiment on yourself. Yeah, so. it's like the shortcut to quite a few things. And you're doing intermittent fasting. Oh, that, yes, right? yes, and I didn't read a book on that, although Jason Chung, I think, wrote the book, The Complete Guide to Fasting. Uh, there's a couple podcasts. One is uh, Stephen Eklund, I think. Okay. I can send you links if you want yeah, to post them. Yeah, I can do that. In the um, comments, there will be links to And all I just feel so good on this intermittent fasting. And it, it's like once you kind of get used to it, the mental clarity, the energy level, the, you, you, I can compress all of my eating into four to six hours a day. Wow. And I just feel great. Now, women have a different metabolism. Yeah, yeah. It's important so, to talk to your doctor before doing anything yeah, like they, cutting out hours of eating. They recommend women do it a little differently. Yes, I did intermittent fasting for a while too. I still do it a little bit, but it's definitely different if you're a female, so keep that in mind. Yeah, especially a, a young one don't with, take, a, with a baby. <laughs> yes, don't take medical advice from the, from this live. But, um, uh, you yeah, know, there's so much potential in fasting that I never really realized. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm very sure that... Um, God willing, it will extend my life or at least keep me healthy. So a lot of the research I've read closer says to the end of is life. about life extension for yeah. intermittent fasting. So. And you know, I have a lot of grandchildren. You do, you got a lot of grandchildren. <laughs> One of them right there. <laughs> yep. Sleeping upstairs. So, you know, I want to um, I want to see them all grow up. Yeah. I want to, I want to see them have children. Oh, well, I want you around too. <laughs> all right, well, that was an awesome awesome thing there about health. I know a lot of people were wondering, I do see comments pretty frequently on social media asking, you know, are you okay? You lost so yeah, much weight. Yeah. And of course, sickness can make you lose a lot of weight. It can. So we're very happy that but, you're happy But you're, healthy. you're my stylist. And so when yes. I make videos, you <laughs> no, can buy I, socks. I've been doing his, um, I went to cosmetology school, not practicing anymore, but I did his makeup for the uh, structure and style videos, and the difference between the color in his skin and the complexion and all of that since he's been on this health journey is incredible. So that's a huge statement to the benefits of clean eating and all of that as well. Mm. So, all right. Well, if you're ready, we will move on to the next sure. question. Yeah. This is from Francis. Asked, what inspired you to create IW? Um. I will be completely honest, <clears throat> I was barely eking out a living trying to teach violin full time mm -hmm. and it's just really hard to you know keep your wife home, have a growing family, pay all your bills on a music teacher's income, yeah. especially self-employed where you have to give 20% of it away instantly. And uh, so I was trying various little side businesses. Um, and this happened to be the one that worked. And uh, I got this idea to teach this writing program that I had learned years before in Canada. And I made a little flyer, and this was pre-internet days. I actually yeah. had to print and stamp and mail these now. things to people. And I got, I got 
20 people to pay 40 bucks to listen to me talk for a day, I thought, this has potential! <laughs> so I just started doing more and more seminars, and after about five years of teaching music full-time and doing seminars, um, you know, on the weekend, basically, a few times, a couple times a month when I could, I was making more doing the seminars, and we started selling videotapes, tapes, VHS tapes. <laughs> I remember you what those You barely like. remember I barely those. I remember, yes. Um, I was do we were starting to sell that stuff, and then we came out with the spelling program right around when you were born, and I thought, you know, this, this isn't doing it. And so we moved, I stopped teaching music, went full time, and it's just been all yeah. blown up from there, yeah. yeah. And I did the spelling program, as a, I did everything as a child as well. <laughs> and you survived. <laughs> from a child's perspective, it worked. <laughs> um, Alright, next question, Jamie asked, can you suggest ways to challenge kids who already love to read and write? Well, on the reading, you want to kind of challenge them to read increasingly challenging books. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things I have personally tried to follow is a rule C.S. Lewis made for himself and suggested to other people. I've heard this said different ways, okay. but the first way I heard it is the way I tried to do it, which is read one old book for every new book. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you read things where, and my definition of old was the author's dead. But if you read a book that was written, you know, 80, 100 years ago, it's going to have probably, for the most part, a higher vocabulary, a little more complex syntax than the books that are by more modern authors. Mm -hmm. and of course, there's many good, good books by living authors, um, but if you kind of sneak those in. So that would be one way. In terms of writing, to challenge a kind of high aptitude writer, there's nothing better than contests. Story contests, essay contests. In fact, we we usually have. I think we have. We do every year. We have a writing contest. Uh, we offer one, and then we have a a, a link on our website. Yeah, a, a page list. I'll put that in of, the comments as well. Of available contests, mm -hmm, and the year. there's different ones. There's you know I know there's a, a annual pro life contest. The Acton Institute libraries often have story writing yeah, and essay contests, and there's just something very very motivating to kids. To know about that win something. I'm gonna be, you know, up against other people right. trying to do their best. You you get more out of them when they're true. trying to do their best than when you're trying to squeeze them to do their best. Yeah, because of course they impress you all the time when you're the parent. They impress you all the time, so you're like, wow, that's so impressive. Yeah. But to have that validation, I think, from a, a different source is also very motivating. One year, I had a class of uh, kids. They were. Pro they were probably in the 12 to 16 range. And uh, I did a national contest with all of them called National History Day. Oh. It's nhd.org. It's a huge okay. thing. You can find it anywhere. And we took them all to the university and in our local town where there's a university. And 11 of my 13 kids placed in wow. the contest and two of them went to state. Wow, that's And awesome. one of them that went to state went to nationals. Wow. And I was so proud of these kids, but I was reflecting on, you know, my trying to cheerlead them into working <laughs> harder didn't have a, a, a fraction of the effect <laughs> of when I said, okay, this contest is happening, here's the deadline. So look for things like that. Uh, what are some others? We Rotary also, clubs, um, Veterans of Foreign Wars, Magnum Opus. We have get a published. Magnum Opus magazine and we publish students' writing. So if your students would enjoy being published in a magazine, they can submit their work to Magnum Opus, which we feature every single month, which is a great resource as well. Yep. 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 So I will put the links in the comments for those resources. All right. Very last question. Bridget asked, what do you do when your kids hate writing? Um, don't worry so much. Um, I, I always tell kids that I meet, you don't have to like doing this. You just have to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to love writing. You just have to be half good at it. Right. And, you know, there's lots of things we have to do in life that we don't particularly like doing. The dishes. But what's really interesting, and um, I've written and spoken about this, is that when you start to feel like you're getting a little better, then you start to like something a little more. Mm -hmm. And when you feel like you're making progress, then you like it a little more. And this is true for all of us, whether we're 60 years old or six years old. Yeah. So um, usually 
when someone hates something, there's some kind of impediment. Mm -hmm. I hated going to the gym for quite a <laughs> while, you know, because I was old and out of shape and fat and never did it before and didn't know what to do. But gradually, you know, over the months, it got less onerous. And now it's kind of like if there's a day where I'm too busy and I can't go to the gym, I'm kind of disappointed. <laughs> and so I've seen kids like that too. I hate this. And then a year later, oh, this is kind of fun. And what changed is that they didn't feel that they were bad at it. Yeah. So that's really the trick is create an environment of success and then they will dislike the thing less. Yes. But there's no guarantee that they're ever going to love it. But that's not a goal. And of course, the, the question I'm sure everybody wa is wondering is, do you actually enjoy writing? <laughs> I just finished an article about which I procrastinated for a solid two <laughs> weeks and claimed all sorts of excuses. No, I find writing not that... In I like having written something. Mm -hmm. I just don't like getting from here to there. The process is not enjoyable. Yeah, and I feel the same way as I I don't enjoy the actual act of writing, but when I finish something, it um, feels really satisfying. Wow, I wrote that and it's you know, it's pretty good. Yeah. So I definitely think that even if your student's not enjoying the process of it, that doesn't mean that they won't enjoy the result and feel proud of what they've accomplished. Yeah. And it, it doesn't happen overnight, but it is it is a gradual shift. Certainly. Well I'm gonna take uh, just a moment to look through and see if anybody has asked any questions here. We have some people who are very grateful for you. All right, Let's see here. Read aloud recommendations? Yes, Read Aloud Revival has, oh, they're oh, yes. saying that they have. Yes, yeah. Sarah McKenzie, my good friend, she has done a great, great work with um, getting uh, tremendous book lists for children of all ages mm -hmm. to read on their own, to listen to, or to be read to. So. And we have a um, timeline of classics as well as a book that we have that just lists some different book recommendations. Yeah, it's actually got over a thousand titles in it. So it's wow, that's a timeline lot of classics is a lot. I'll put a comment for that as and, well. And Sarah tends to um, recommend more recently written books. She loves to interview living authors, mm -hmm. uh, whereas our list would be more kind of like, okay, this is classics. Which is what you were talking time. about. It's great to find a balance a between balance. modern and old and all of that. So, yeah. great. Well, if and if nobody else has any more questions, we will wrap this up. Oh, one more question. My son will finish SSS level A next uh, year two next year, and then we'll go to themed units for high school. Should we switch them back to SSS or stick with themed? Whichever you prefer. Um, the benefit of the video is I tell a joke every single time. <laughs> Great the kids like it. Your prep work is virtually minimal. Um, the kids feel like they're part of a group, even though they're not. They feel like it. Mm -hmm. So there's advantages there. Uh, the theme-based book, of course, has the advantage of being, you're not dependent on watching a video, you can do the lesson more easily with, um, you know, with a group of people. Um, so a lot of the, the co-ops and things use the theme base, yeah. but we're getting more and more people using the SSS. I think our source texts are great. on the newer materials were really written with a lot of intentionality mm -hmm. to be good source texts. Yeah. Um, and, and are better than some of the ones that are still floating around in the theme-based books. Which we're working on, continuing <clears throat> but, to you know, update. But uh, for high school, I, I guess I would say that SSS is going to be closer to getting college prep level. And then we do have some top secret, more advanced courses secret. that cannot be announced yet. But if you're just looking for a, a year or two down the line, we'll have those out for high school level stuff. That's great. Wonderful. And again, if you have ever any questions, you can always contact our customer service team. They're available by phone um, from 9 to 5 Central Time, uh, Monday through Friday. And that phone number is 800-856-5815. And then we also have a live chat on our website, which is iw.com forward slash chat. They are also at the same business hours. You can chat with somebody live. And then if you'd rather not talk to somebody live, you can always email our customer service team at info at iw.com 
everybody's amazing and super, super helpful. So we're so glad that you all were able to join us here today. Thank you, Dad, for coming by yeah, it's to a do pleasure. this. We'll do it again and sometime. Yes, we are having another live in January. So if you didn't get your question answered or you're thinking of more questions, um, just keep an eye out for that post. You can drop your questions and we will hope to see you all in, sure. again in January. We'll, we'll wish everyone a happy holiday and Merry, season. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We're so glad you all could join us. All right, goodbye. Bye.